Hello, everyone. It's time for more Intro to R. Um, today, we are going to be talking about reading and writing files because we've talked a lot about already, you know, how, to, how the basics of R, how it works, how you can manipulate data, how you manipulate data classes, things like this, and now how, how do you plot. But, you know, at some point you want to start using something other than just the base data sets in R. You want to use your own data, right, to do data analyses. So today we're going to talk to you about how to get R to read in that data, how to clean that data so that it's nice and uh, usable for R, and then writing files in case you want to save a data set uh, to a plain text file. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so hashtag other people's data. Um, if you're active on, on science Twitter, you may have run across this or the R, R uh, stats hashtag on, on Twitter. You may have run across this hashtag already. It's um, sort of vending frustration about uh, the format that people put their data up until, uh, into. So up until this point, we've used the base R data sets, but you wanna obviously use your own data set, maybe somebody else's data set to do stuff. Uh, but reading and cleaning up data is really a huge source of frustration for a lot of people, and they often post on this hashtag other people's data to discuss creative ways in which people record their data and make it uh, difficult to use. So here's a good one. Turns out somebody has annotated the same dates on Excel, uh, Excel workbook with an asterisk, making it break the reading columns as dates. No surprise, Excel still thinks it's a date. It thinks everything's a date, which is pretty funny. Um, no, 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 I just received other people's data as 276 page set of printed tables scanned into a PDF. <laughs> Ooh, who wants to be the person to go through 276 pages and manually enter data? Nobody. Uh, Dear Future um, Counters, Blackpool Warbler, which is board, is capital BLPW, not BKPW or BCPW or BLWA or any of these things. Apparently all of those were coded as this one species of bird. Somebody has to go back and fix that, right? Um, someone out there counting pollen grains thought it was great to do less than one rather than just zero as a phone tray. Way to troll me. Many numeric comments now read as characters because of this. Yay, and you'll see that issue. But this is my absolute favorite. City of Detroit produced a lookup table for its absentee precincts and it's in cell, but all of the values are clip art. <laughs> I just, how amazing that is, is just, uh, it, it, it almost makes you wonder as if, if people are intentionally trying to hide something doing this, right? It's impossible for, for a computer to deal with a clip art image, even though you can look at it and read it. So somebody's going to have to go through manually and, and type all those things in or use like machine learning to, to recognize the, the clip art image of, of, uh, of a thing, um, of a picture in this Excel file and read it back in. So it's like, are they trying to hide things or is it just somebody who is literally that bad at entering data that they thought this was like a perfectly fine way to, to deal with it? It's, it's totally unclear. But so data reading and, and cleaning skills is actually a, a whole nother skill set that you kind of have to have if you're going to work with your data or other people's data um, in terms of data analysis. Uh, we'll work on an easy set that needs some cleaning, but not a whole lot, just to show you some different things that you can do. We'll work on examples from different file types. I know I really encourage everybody to save sort of raw data in plain text and non-proprietary proprietary data formats like CSV. We'll talk about what that is. Um, and we'll practice saving into data, uh, uh, data in a way that makes sense for later on. So we're going to go through some of these things. It's by no means an exhaustive list, unfortunately, because there's lots and lots of data. I think I read on a Tidyverse uh, some perfect qu quote uh, Tidyverse uh, uh, article, some perfect quote from Leo Toy Story about how happy families are all the same, but unhappy ones are, are unhappy uh, in each in its unique way. So it's same thing for data, totally agree. Uh, their point was that clean data sets look really nice and all of the ones that are a mess are a mess, uniquely a mess. So we'll go through some basic steps here. Okay, so importing data. So importing data, remember how uh, for our uh, environment in R, that's basically R's memory, right? Um, you may have a lot of data on your computer, but it's not in R's memory. It can't really do anything until you import it. So uh, what I want you to go ahead and do is I'm gonna open my project here for the course. Um, 
And what I want you to do before you get started, so you may have to pause this video and go do this, but in the lecture notes, you can see the lecture notes uh, for unit two um, in this in this lecture, uh, 2.3 or 2-3, uh, there is a zip drive and uh, a, zip, a zip drive, um, a zip file called data.zip. And what I want you to do is unzip that. Uh, so expand it out until you get data. And um, this is a special folder with some data, like just basic data uh, uh, structures that we're going to use for today. But you have to have that unzipped. Um, throw it in this folder with the um, the RMD file as well. So it's in, so the structure is kind of like there's this notebook RMD file, and then there's the data folder in that same directory. And we'll go ahead and use that because the, this is definitely, this uh, RMD file is going to definitely look for that data. Here we go. It's definitely going to look for that data. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and restart and clear my chunks. There we go. So it's all, oh, it re ran it though. I didn't want it to do that. Whoops. Oopsie doopsie, it happens. Clear output, that's what I wanted to do, not rerun chunks. Okay, but that's fine. I didn't break anything, just wanted to start clean and fresh. Okay, the other thing you'll need to do is there's three packages that I'd really like to use right now. So if you're done uh, unzipping or, or uh, decompressing that data folder with the little files that we're gonna use, um, go ahead and if you don't have the tidy R janitor and read XL packages, go ahead and go into packages and install those guys using the install button. So pause, make sure you're all ready to go and then you can come back. Okay, so if you're back from that, uh, importing data is going to just be loading that data from storage and me memory for immediate use. Remember that most data storage is not immediately available, right, by the computer, and you have to read it in uh, from storage into that memory because of the way that, you know, we've already talked about working directories and structures and memories and how uh, volatile versus um, uh, permanent storage is. Uh, importing da data into R not only reads it, but will often format the data into what it guesses is an appropriate data form um, or data classes and organization. This also depends kind of on which function that you use. We're going to go over read dot table instead of uh, read underscore table, but um, yeah, it kind of, it will try to guess. It'll try to help you out so you don't have to specify everything little, little thing. But again, if you're working with really messy data, um, then it might guess wrong and you might have to figure out why that is. Uh, okay, so we're going to start right away by um, getting into this notebook, and I want to go ahead and run this chunk right here that loads all these libraries up. This is just saying it's attaching this package, and, and a certain one of these uh, tests are going to be uh, masked um, from the stats package, so don't worry about that too much. Okay, so we have this. Uh, we have a run this chunk, so what we're going to do is go ahead and run this chunk. And what it's doing for us is that it's read in this uh, in the data folder, it's read in a CSV called bluecrab.csv. Okay, this is a chapter from my data. This is data from a chapter of my dissertation. In case it's experimental uh, stuff here, and so you can see here. Um, so running this view uh, bluecrab.data uh, will pop up this window for you. You can see this nice little um, thing. So it's it's got a nice little refresh column that has some new numbers and some NAs that it's got here. Uh, nice speed numeric com. Uh, uh, column model, um, which I think is, is going to be a character at this point, not a factor, uh, even though we should probably encode it as a factor at some point. And then current uh, orientation rep and uh, the Reynolds number here. So all of this stuff that seems like it might be numeric, you know, is, is numeric, right? Uh, all the stuff that seems like at least it's not numeric should probably be character is, is character here. So that's, uh, it's doing a pretty good job right off the bat, okay? Um, you can, s what I want you to do though, is to go in to this data folder, and I want you to actually click on the blue crab and save view data. And so what you can see for view data is uh, that all of these things have, you know, there's, there's words here at the top, and then there's numbers separated by commas. Um, all the way down for that entire data frame. And so you can see uh, really off the bat that you can separate out this, the Reynolds number, the rep, uh, B is the orientation, current is zero, and uh, the model C, and then the speed. Okay, so you can already see what the structure of this data file is gonna be like. So common file types, text files, so plain text files are data files that just consist of plain text, separated by or delineated with 
a specific character. And so for this, it's called CSV um, because it's called a comma separated values. Okay, so values are separated by commas, and then a hard return uh, separates the rows from each other. So that's uh, and those that character doesn't actually show up. Um, here, but you can see the commas. Uh, you can also have tab separated values. Uh, so values that are separated by tab character. Um, that's a really common one too. And there are other separators you can use just about anything that you want. Decimal, um, semicolon, space, just about anything you can do. You can specify that as your separating, uh, separating mark and um, create a text file based on that, which R can read all of those types. Uh, then you have, in terms of file types, another type, which is your spreadsheet or, or your spreadsheet files, your workbook files. So this is something like an Excel workbook, numbers, Google Sheets, things like this. These are data files of spreadsheets meant to be opened by a specific application. So, you know, plain text files, uh, you can open with just about anything, right? But these uh, specific spreadsheet files, only Excel can open Excel, you know, numbers, maybe numbers can open an Excel file or, or back and forth, but you lose some data and, and there's compatibility issues and it's all proprietary. So what do these look like? If you actually look at the raw file data, here's a Mac uh, numbers file and you can see oh, there's like a little bit of stuff. You can see some, some things go in there, some real worlds real words going on there, but look at the Excel. It's just gobbledygook, right? Uh, these are proprietary formats. So, you know, some you can write some around them, uh, but not, uh, they're not human readable. They have to have Excel uh, there to uh, interpret that for you and open it. So already you can see how um, obscured uh, an Excel spreadsheet is versus um, just like a really, really simple plain text file. Okay, so I'm really going to urge you to use plain text files. Um, but in, in terms of reading in those plain text files, there's a really pow powerful uh, function called read.table. And this is a function in base R, just the utils package, which imports data from text files and into it as a data frame. Okay, so uh, there's a huge number of options for dealing with this. These are our arg arguments within the read.table. Um, they're a header. You can assign a header um, uh, uh, of columns as column names. So you can see that, that this file has a header. It has uh, column names here in the first line. Uh, you can uh, specify the separator character. So for here, this would be a separator character of of a comma, okay. Um, the, we'll talk about what this read CSV is in just a second, okay. Um, you can skip, so you can actually skip the number of rows at the top of the file that you would like to just kind of ignore. So if you have some header on top that gives some information about it, maybe a sentence or something like that, and then your table starts off, you can actually just skip that over and say, hey, actually, the the data, the header starts here, and, and then go. Uh, uh, all the way down, which is really, really useful. Um, in rows, the maximum number of rows you want to read in. So if you want to just grab like the first hundred or the first thousand or something like that, you can specify that. Row.names is either a vector that gives row names or a single number that specifies which column of the data should be the row name. So if you say one, then, you know, the column, uh, this one column um, here, which is, you know, it's, it's a value, it's not a row name, uh, but it, it would be the row names that you could specify. Uh, call classes is a vector of characters that specifies data types in each column as it should be imported. So if you don't want this orient to be a character, you could say, I want this to be numeric, this to be integer, this to be uh, a factor, that to be integer, and this to be a factor, and that to be, uh, or this is a factor, that's a factor, and this is numeric. Okay, so that's the call classes is, is really quite powerful as a tool to specify how you want those da data read in. Um, uh, if de the default option is not doing a very good job for you. And strings as factors. So this specifies whether or not you want character strings to be read in as factors. And um, this is going to be overwritten by uh, call classes. Uh, but this is a really uh, a weird legacy thing with R. It used to default as strings as factors true, which would turn like literally all text into all characters into a factor, which is not mostly what people don't want. So this is now like it's now this is changed as default as false. But uh, if you want like for for instance all this, this would be actually a great to have strings as factors true because this and that would both be strings and uh, uh, would be read in as strings, but they're also uh, both factors. So that would you know actually be okay in this, in this specific case. 
Okay, so um, there are a couple other functions that basically call read.table. So they, they work based on read.table, but they're specialized. So read.csv is a special case of read.table where the separator, it's automatically putting that separator as a column for you. So that's uh, sort of easy. And that's where we get this read.table. So all I have to do is give it the file name I wanted to read and it reads it automatically because it knows um, based on that, that it's separated by commas. Read.delim is um, a special case where the uh, a period, a decimal place, is the separator. Um, and going back to our original import, we can see that, again, this uh, sets up into a really, really nice little table for us uh, and a really nice little data frame for us, which is great. It's pretty clean. It's pretty nice. Okay, that's that's wonderful. If you have a data set and you can do it, you know, you can read it in in one line. What? Amazing, perfect. You don't really have to know anything more, but uh, because all data that's nice and clean is 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 nice and clean all in the same way. However, reality is uh, hashtag other people's data, and so having some basic skills at importing not so perfect data is really really useful uh, for you in the future. Okay, so I'm going to go over some tools for this, but you know this is not going to be comprehensive in terms of what I can do. Um, we're going to look at not so perfect data set, see if we can't import it. So first, I want to go and try a second data set. This is this babycrabs1.csv. All right, so we're going to go down to babycrabs1. By the way, if you'd like to um, read more about that read CSV, this is the way to do it. OK, so here we go, babycrab1. So let's look at this. So let's look at this baby crab. This is also a chapter of my dissertation, by the way. Um, I did it all in crabs. So this is data from that. OK, so let's see what we've got. We've got this. Um, OK, so that's not as clean. We got some extra things going on, which don't have anything in them. We have uh, these weird column header names, which uh, are not very helpful, like x.6, x.7 going on. And look at all of this numeric data. It's all characters right now. All of this stuff is characters. So if I do a class on the baby crab data and what, you know, um, x.1, which really should be numeric, um, you're going to see it's the characters. So this is all loading it in as characters, which is not helpful, right? Not helpful for us at this point. Um, so what's going on with this character class? It, it, when you look at the, the file, so let's go ahead and look at this file. We can see a lot of uh, different things. Um, there's a bunch of garbage in it, like just ca a bunch of rows of comm commas, right? That's not, again, not helpful, it's garbage. Uh, so how can we improve this import is the big question because we'd really like to have access to these data and actual numbers, you know, not them appearing to be characters. So let's look at it here. Okay, so this first row looks pretty useless. It's, it's you know, it's it's saying the species name of this, uh, you know, it's Hemigrapsis organensis, the species name of this crab. But then if you look at this number two row, um, that actually might look like it should be column names. Don't you think? Like all of these are lining up. Uh, it makes sense um, in terms of, of what these column names are. So maybe it's just that this first line we need to get rid of, okay? So let's try for this one, skip equals one. Um, so if we look at skip equals one, this is what we get. Okay, and again, all this is in the markdown folder. You can follow along with it. Uh, if you look at the baby crab now, oh, oh, that looks much better, right? Now we're getting numeric um, off of this number size, uh, log dot size, and hair diameter, all of these things that look like they approximately should be numeric or not numeric, okay? Um, and then there's like a couple characters, the sex is uh, 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 coming out as characters. So, you know, hey, that's that's much better. So we've improved um, pretty dramatically our read and of this data, our input of this data, just using the option skip equals one. So again, showing you that that extra option right there is just this extra argument is uh, skip equals one. So we're skipping that first line because it's, it's garbage and then uh, uh, using this as our header the next way. Okay, and why is it not header equals true? Uh, because that's the default. So if you don't want a header in your data, you just go header equals false and then it, it, it ignores the header area of it and doesn't pull that first, that first row as your uh, column name. Okay, non-text file formats. I know, okay. 
Tidyverse does have a package tool that will help you read XLS and XLSX files, okay, so Excel files. Um, you can do it read, read underscore dot Excel. And so I have a little, uh, uh, a little example here of blue two. And so basically I've put this blue crab into an Excel workbook and saved it like this. Um, and so we have blue two that is reading it in and you can see it's basically the same as blue one because it's the same data. Uh, so that works okay um, for simple spreadsheets, uh, but it really can get tripped up with complicated stuff and other like objects like charts and graphs and tables and, and comment boxes and things like that. Okay, so be careful. I'm really going to beg you, okay? Consider exporting your spreadsheet into a text file like a CSV. It makes it more stable. It makes it better. You won't have to worry, you know, five years from now, it's update Excel and now it won't read your old workbook or because it's a defunct format, anything like that. We're using the R. Reads it in nice and clean. It's so, so good, right? Uh, it's nice and accessible. You can look at it. Uh, you don't need Excel. If you, you know, get a new computer and, and you can't afford an Excel uh, license or anything, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff, right? So just consider exporting the spreadsheet as a text file. However, I know that I probably can't convince you to stop using spreadsheets, right? It's a little bit of a, should I do an abstinence only education here and not mention spreadsheets or should we be realistic about the fact that you are going to use spreadsheets? Um, so you may as well use them safely uh, so you can up upload the data uh, in R later, okay? So let's talk about using spreadsheets safely. Um, First tip is align your data in the upper left, leaving no extra columns on either side. Okay, so this, uh, I see this all the time where people start these tables like in the middle of a workbook and I'm like, ah, what's going on? Because you have these extra columns here, you have extra columns here, um, a bunch of extra rows you're gonna have to skip. This is like a hot mess. So please don't do this. No, 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 no. Do do this, put it, shove it up into just like the data uh, the, the data frame that we have here, shove it up into that upper left corner so that you start at A1. Um, and then you run there and you're only using the number of columns you need and the number of rows you need. That's gonna make it way cleaner when you export that or save it as a CSV later. It's gonna be a nice uh, thing for, for our to upload and read, okay? Put objects like charts and graphs on a separate sheet from the data. Don't do this, don't do this, okay? I know that you wanna see it right there, but here's the thing. If you do this, it's gonna make R implode. Um, it doesn't handle this well because what it wants is just, it just wants this thing, okay? So consider putting this table up here, you know, in the corner alone, and then just do this. Put that chart on a different tab. You see how I have different sheets, different tabs. Do a plus, different tab, and then your card, uh, your chart. If you're looking for data viz anyway, you don't really need to see this table of data. To see it and it functions just perfectly. You see, these are exactly the same. What I've done is created the chart, uh, uh, cut it, and then pasted it into a new thing. So it, it's totally fine to do it that way. That way, once you export this, it's going to export each sheet into a separate CSV, right? You can ignore the chart one and just use the data one, all right? So that makes it good. If you just insist upon, I don't know, anybody would want to do a chart in Excel because it's like a nightmare. But if you want to do that, that's how you do it. So you can still export stuff to R uh, well. Put only one data sheet per uh, data set per sheet. So here's the blue crab data and the baby crab data both on one sheet, look, I left an extra column so that you know you can see them, they're visually separated. Don't do this. They all deserve their own sheet, okay? Or their own workbook if it's two different projects, right? Do this. So you can see here, I've, I've just created two different sheets. I've named one blue crab data, put that, crammed it up in the upper left-hand corner. Um, uh, did this one for blue crab and, and baby crabs the same way, okay? So we have each one of these things. So when you export it as CSV, it's gonna save, again, each one of these sheets as separate files, and then all of the data is nice and separate. It's named something reasonable, very easy to understand, okay? Here's some other things. Um, use plain text and avoid special characters, inserting things like pictures, clip art, video. Okay, like, I know that you can do that. Excel will let you do that, but you really should ask the question, should you be doing that with data, okay? Like, there's no reason to do that with data. Um, and again, if you absolutely feel the burning urge to, to you know, 
put a video or clip art or something like that into an Excel workbook, put it on a separate sheet from your raw data, okay? Put it on the separate sheet from your raw data. If you need to write notes, make a comments column and restrict that text just to that column. Don't like put like random notes over here because then R is gonna have to, you know, it's gonna export that, it's gonna capture that and then R is gonna have like this thing and it doesn't know what to do with it, it's weird. Just have a comments. If you don't have anything in the comments for all the rows, then that's fine. Just have it uh, nice and organized there, okay? Don't write comments in random cells. Um, if a column should be numeric, make sure all that data is numeric, okay? So don't be putting stars by anything. Don't be uh, uh, writing, you know, average at the bottom of one of the columns to, to put an average calculation in some other column. Don't do that because it's going to screw up the way that R reads that data in and assigns the data class to it. Any calculations, again, should ideally go on another sheet. Just do a calculation sheet. You can pull that stuff. All of those formulas work just fine by just switching to that other sheet and then dragging down to, to capture the, the cells that you want. Okay, so try to do any calculation. What I'm trying to say is leave your raw data, okay, on its own sheet. <laughs> Every, all of this other garbage, just put it, just put it someplace else, okay? put it someplace else. All right, so right now I want you to do a check your understanding here. I have left a helpful little uh, spot for you in the notebook. Um, uh, someplace, there you go. So check, check your understanding here. What I'd like you to do is import the data set tomato hall 2021. This is my data from my garden um, of all of the tomatoes, the heirloom and the paste tomatoes and pounds that I pulled out per, per day and per um, uh, per date. Okay, so I'd like you to read that in. The first column should be row names um, and the dates should be characters and there is a header. So go ahead and do that. Go ahead and code it up in this little art chunk I've provided for you in that notebook. Uh, you can pause the video right now, work on getting that done, and then come back. Okay, so hopefully you're back. Um, hopefully I give you enough time to pause your video and, and come back. So Let's move on. Cleaning data. All right. So sometimes you get stuff in, you still need to work on it. Okay. You still need to make it into a thing where, you know, it's got nice factors. It's got, you know, reasonable header uh, titles. It's, it's getting rid of some of these, this, uh, the data not available, um, NAs and things like this. So we're going to go over some of the things. Um, Data needs to be cleaned up. Uh, during this process, data are put in appropriate form for whatever calculations or analysis you need to do, okay? It's really important to, when you do this, uh, instead of doing this analysis over here in the um, command line and then saving it over here, what I really want you to do is put the entire analysis in a workbook, okay? So it takes that raw data file and actually makes all those calculations on the raw data file and then gives you the data out, okay? Because that makes it replicable. You don't have to worry about, oh, what did I do to clean that data, right? It's all written down there for, for you. Um, if the, the data needs to change, then you have a, a, a way of changing stuff. You know there's like a, a history, a traceback of all the things that you've done to that raw data file that you get, okay? So even if it's kind of a mess, um, I encourage you to, to do all of the coding in your R markdown and uh, run that start to finish uh, every time you need to do that data, okay? So avoid doing this in command line, um, the console, because we really, really don't want that. We don't want you to do be doing steps that you have to remember later, write it down. That's what the markdown is for. Okay, so quite often it's frustrating because of inconsistency with how the data are entered or coded, uh, weird format issues, just like plain old typos and mistakes, uh, extra info and in file types, stuff like this. It can get very, very frustrating, okay? Um, and quite a few tools do exist to, to help you clean data. And the Tidyverse has a really nice set of package tools. They all take a little bit of time to learn, but that's okay because what we're going to do is give you a couple of examples of things that you can do to the data. Um, but, you know, if you have a need of, I need to aggregate this, I need to clean up the columns, empty columns, stuff like this, a lot of those functions are already built. So you don't have to figure out how to code to do that. You can simply go into Tidyverse and look for a package, uh, a tool that's already in this package. And the two big ones we're going to talk about are TidyR, which is the main package, and Janitor, which is a nice cleanup package that does a lot of nice things. Okay, so let's talk about first, um, I have this baby crab uh, data set already um, up here. It's a data frame. 
And what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up over here a little bit, save that out. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about standardizing names. So column names are one of these things that if you really enjoy using that dollar sign operator to call column names, it helps to remember what you've called things and be a little bit standardized about that. Because if you notice for this uh, baby crab data, you have number size dot dot m m dot like log dot size. It, it, how am I supposed to remember what that is? Okay, because there's like a bunch of dots and all of this stuff. And this this basically came, comes from, I had parentheses and instead of putting parentheses in the column um, header, the column name, uh, it's changed those into a period. Okay, like, oh, all right. And that's same true with all of the uh, spaces, all of those changed into periods as well. So that's how it's trying to force you into some kind of file system type e name, right? It has some name. It allows you to do some stuff, but not other stuff. Um, but standardizing them makes uh, dealing with data a lot easier, a lot easier to read, a lot easier to, to work with and stuff like that. So useful thing um, is clean underscore names in the janitor package is a great way to do this. So this is really, really nice. So what we're going to do is run this clean not names, and you can already see that the names are really different here. So this is, by the, by the way, not going to store because I'm just acting on this uh, data set, and then the output is going to be here. Okay, so it's not storing this; it's just running it and then uh, making an output for some of these. So I have number size underscore mm. It's gotten rid of all those dots, right? That were kind of a mess. Underscore size. So every time there's a space, it gets goes to an underscore cuticle thickness, hair bearing segments, you know, all of this stuff. So it's much easier and much, um, much more straightforward uh, in terms of uh, what to do. And then we have, you know, all of this garbage right there. Okay, so it's really, really nice. Um, you know, so uh, compared directly to the old column names, it's a lot easier to remember size underscore mm rather than size dot dot mm dot, right? So that's a really nice, super fast way that you can clean it up those names. Um, removing empty rows and columns. So a lot of times when you save stuff as CSV, if you've touched those, especially in Excel, it's really a big fan of just like including a bunch of empty columns um, that maybe you didn't want or anything like that, but it includes them. So you still have to clean them up because it's ugly and, and you don't, you know, it's 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 saving these spots and making the, the data frame bigger than it needs to be. So we want to clean those up. And then janitor tool uh, also package also has a remove underscore empty. Um, and this package is a really easy way to do that. The which argument specifies which if you want to remove empty rows or columns or both. OK, so here, um, right here, going to the next chunk, uh, we've again acted on this baby crab data, but uh, it's it, it's acting on um, it's not it's going to produce an output, but not store it anywhere. OK, so which equals rows and columns. So I'm going to remove both. And you can see now if we go over here to the end, all of those extra columns are no longer there. It just stops at cuticle di diameter. You'll notice that the names are still old because, again, we didn't store that. We didn't replace the baby crab data. We're just uh, taking that original data and, and, and uh, doing the function right on there. OK. So that's a really easy way, again, to do that. And you can specify rows or columns, but this is how you do both. OK, removing empty rows and columns. Um, oh, yeah, so it went from column number uh, 16 to 13, removing those three empty columns. Um, I'd also like to point out a really nice thing about tidy, which is the pipe operator. So the tidyverse has this really nice function, command pipe command, which is dollar sign greater than um, or yes, is that true? Greater than do, uh, sorry, percent sign greater than percent sign, uh, which when used together, it interprets at the, as this pipe operator. It allows you to run several functions at once, and this is the syntax for that. So the syntax is this: you're going to do your object name, you're going to pipe that. So the way you do it is pipe that to uh, one function, and then pipe that to a second function. Um, so that oh and this is piping it to a third command, and that's actually a typo. So I'll remove that once once you guys get this. This should be fixed. But this, uh, you know, then you stop. You don't want to pipe it to anything else uh, if you only have two functions. Okay. So um, an example for this is here. Oh, so uh, we've already talked about omit uh, NA values there. So that's good. Um, so uh, 
where is my pipe operator? Here it is. Okay, here we go. So uh, here's the example. You can say the baby crab, baby crab dot data is what we want to pipe into clean names. All right, so that's great. And then we're going to pipe that. So if we run just this, I'm going to run this down here so you can see. Okay, so what it's doing is clean, cleaning those names and it's cleaning that up for you right here. So the pipe operator uh, uh, on one cleans up those names just like how we saw in our, our uh, past thing. But if you want to do both of them, um, you pipe that, it will perform this first function first and then pipe the output of that into the second function where we're removing the empty columns right there. So when you do that, um, it's creating something called babycrab.clean uh, baby for clean data. And if we look at that, now we have our nice uh, reformatted headers and uh, none of that other column garbage over here, those empty columns. Okay, so it's acting both of those things in, in, uh, in series, okay? Really, really good. You'll notice that you don't have to, the thing you're operating on, the object you're operating on, you don't actually have to put is an argument down here. The pipe command does that for you. So the pipe operator does that for you. And just a store is just again, storing this, uh, the start of that pipe uh, series into a new thing. So it's, it's pretty nice. I, I think it's pretty nice um, that goes there. Okay, um, so check your understanding. Use the pipe operator uh, to, and this is where you're going to put that, use the pipe operator to create babycrab.clean object and it takes babycrab.data and cleans it with each of the cleaning steps at, at once, but in this order. So you're doing it in one continuous line of code, but it's doing it in this order. You clean the column names, you remove empty rows, and then you remove all rows with uh, NA values, which again is that omit.na. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Throw it right here, use that pipe operator, uh, try it out, um, and then come back. Okay, so hopefully you're back. You've gotten you've gotten that. It's a, a pretty straightforward thing to do. Okay. Uh, so now you've cleaned your data, you've maybe done some stuff to it, you really would like to write it to a file. Like, so overall, I'm going to discourage this. Um, Overall, I'm going to discourage it. I'm going to say, like, if you need to do any cleaning steps on your data, do it on the raw data and then continue on with the analysis at that point and don't save it because often you kind of get confused about what's raw and what's saved and anything like that. But, you know, sometimes you really do need to write a, a data to a file. So we can talk about this. And it's really easy to do with the write.table function, which again is part of that base package, utilities package. So here's our example down here. Um, and write that table, we're going to write baby crab clean, clean to uh, data slash baby crab clean. And I've already read this, so it's already there. Uh, but the really thing, the arguments here are the object you'd like to write uh, to the file. So the thing that you want to save, um, the file name, okay. And we're put, putting this in the folder data. So we go data uh, slash baby crab dash clean dot CSV. And then the separator that you want to use, which is a comma, because we want to do a CSV, right? Um, so if you want to do that, you can run this and it should produce this baby cob that clean for you. So you can view your file and, uh, you know, it's a little bit on the mess side because it's a really long file here, but you can see all of that is there and separated by, um, separated by, oh, did I, I may not have cleaned it up, uh, entirely. I didn't do the omit here. So. Uh, mine is going to have an A's, but yours probably won't because you've done the check your understanding already. Okay, so doing that um, is a really easy way to create, you know, just that text, plain text uh, CSV file. Um, so the sep is a character, again, um, for separating out those columns. A pinned is a logical, a true, false. Uh, do you want to add to the end of an existing file? So if I did something like a pinned equals true, for this and wrote it again. Oh, it didn't like that. So maybe not. Append equals true. That should have worked. Attempt to set append ignored. Huh. Okay, I don't know why it did that, but 
maybe I shouldn't fight with it. Anyway, append equals true. If you want to add to an existing file, a lot of times that will let you. Uh, question mark why that didn't let me do that, but that's fine. Um, Row.names uh, is again a true, false, or a character. Uh, if you do true or false, it indicates which row name should be printed um, and a vector of row names the same length if you don't want the first row base or the first uh, column to be row names. Column names is really sim similar again to row names, but you know, opposite for columns. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, write.csv, which we see here, right here. So this is write.table, this is write.csv. Um, again, this is going to be a, a special case where the SEP uh, is already set for you um, to, uh, uh, to a comma. OK, so la one last check your understanding. Here's a little box for you to put that in. Uh, pick a data frame from data. Anyone will do. It doesn't matter. Make sure you get a data frame and not like a TS or time series or a list or anything like that, because it's a little bit messier doing that way. But find a data frame and save it to a CSV file in that data folder. And then that will be it. I will work on what this error was. <laughs> Um, unexpected behavior, but we'll work on them, what that error is. And um, the action items for next time is to complete that assignment 2.2 using our markdown, of course, because that's what we're doing, and then read Davies chapter 8 and Chang's chapter 1 through 2 for next time. But that's it for me, and I will see you all later. Um, yeah, keep on coding.